Alright, today I just want to make a video on what a spun bearing actually looks like and talk about how bad it is whenever it really actually is a spun bearing and not just a like worn out bearing. And later on I'll talk about my 305 project and stuff like that, why it's taking me so long. Okay, so this is a 305 Chevy. This is the number 8 cylinder. And if you ever see this, be very careful. I already stuck this little piece under my fingernail by accident while I was sitting there thinking, oh, I should be careful, it might cut me or something. I should probably use a rag or uh, some pliers to, to mess with it or to try to get it out. Kind of looks like there's no bearing there, but look. First, I'm going to spin it around so you see exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the both halves are like one piece now. And you see what I'm talking about? The bearing was literally spinning inside the rod. That's why it's called a spun bearing. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but I'm just bringing that up because most people call every rod knock a spun bearing, but they don't always spin. Here goes the bearing that came out. Let's just take a little bit of a look at it. I'm telling you, this is like the textbook version of a spun bearing. You can see how one is over, like it's overlapping. And, um, you know, I think that's what causes some motors to lock up. Because some of them don't lock up, they just start knocking and stuff. And then also, the way that, the, the reason I noticed this, the, the reason I kind of knew that, that this had happened, I've only seen this like a few times on maybe three or four different engines in all the years I've been messing with this stuff. And no, I haven't taken apart thousands of inches. No, I'm like, but anyway, the reason I jumped straight back to number eight um, is because I was rotating the, the crankshaft to get the pistons out, and I noticed it chirping. And like making a little chirp noise. Squeak, chirp, it kind of goes chirp, chirp. And the only time I've heard that before was I've seen a truck engine running going chirp, 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 chirp. Well, it didn't really sound exactly like that, but it was making that noise and you can tell the engine was trying to lock up because anyway when they took it apart it had bearings that were that were overlapped like this and why is that so significant and why am I crying about it well whenever the sp the bearing is spinning inside the rod then it tear it, it just it wears this out and it heats it up here goes another rod that just has normal you know it's worn out it's a bad bearing but it's more normal it didn't spin all it did was like you know wear it out right here that's what normally happens in my opinion okay so I don't know if the camera picks it up or it actually really doesn't look bad I'm not I'm just I was gonna say something that actually doesn't make sense and what I was gonna say is normally whenever you have a bearing spin or something or even if they just knock and it's not actually doing all that that the rod will be discolored and this one, it doesn't really seem like it is. It seems a little darker, but usually that, like, they'll, sometimes I'll have like a blue line right here. Like that heat affected line thing. Kind of like whenever you weld or something. Anyway, but still, the problem is, is right here is worn out. And it's, it's going to have to be resized. And, you know, that's kind of not cool because that's more money. And the whole reason I got this other motor that I'm taking apart was because um, I was hoping that it had. Um, I want to use a whole rotating. I want to use a whole rotating assembly that um, that came like that from the factory. I don't want. I, I was trying not to mismatch any parts. So, but then I don't know. This is becoming a big waste of time, and I can't get nothing done because I keep getting these other motors, and I should. I could have just. I would have been a lot better off if I was just to have taken that first engine and just bought a set of rods and pistons for it and get it balanced. Even though that would be like spending an extra, I don't know, like three, four, five hundred bucks that I wouldn't have to. But was all this actually worth the trouble doing all this? It's not, it's, it's kind of not. So that's the, that's actually what keeps messing me up is I keep like, 
getting new ideas and oh I'm going to do this and thinking about the whole project at once instead of just doing one thing at a time but I'm actually taking my own advice what well, I did and I already sent the roller block to the machine shop and it's there right now getting checked out and I'm going to get it board 30 and I'll figure out the the crankshaft situation later on but I mean I have plenty of parts though I have like f like four engines so I'm going to be able to figure something out but Anyway, one more weird thing about this engine. I wasn't actually inside the engine whenever all this took place, obviously, so I'm not 100% sure if this is what causes that. But somebody said that whenever you have a rod like this one, one of the first things I noticed was that all the bearings, so all the bearings so far were stuck to the crank. And like, they don't even clip in here. They just fall out like that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's really that's really odd. It's like they're sh they're sh they're shrunk and they were like clamped onto the to the crankshaft. Somebody speculated that they do that whenever they get really hot, which I don't know if I believe that or not because that dude wasn't inside the engine either when it happened. So maybe he's right. I don't know. Like he was saying, that's a, that's a sign that the whole thing was starving for oil and it got everything hot. This one's like that too. You see this other one is like that too. The first two cylinders are like that where they don't, they don't actually... Like stick in there. Let's take a look at that bearing again. I just thought this looked pretty crazy. That's why I wanted to make a video on it. Because this is a, a rare occasion. And I didn't know which one it was when I heard it squeak. I just went ahead and started shaking each rod and I found the loosest one. I said, oh, that must have a really big problem. And I also kind of wanted to update everybody that's been watching my channel and seeing what I was doing. Kind of update where I'm at and why it's taking so long. If there's something that can be learned from this video, it's something that somebody told me a long time ago is that, well, it's something that regards engines, that people don't pull stuff for no reason. If there's a junk motor sitting outside, it wasn't running perfectly fine. If there's a car that's been parked for three years, it wasn't running fine. They don't, people don't park stuff and people don't pull engines whenever they're perfectly fine. Maybe the rare occasion that it's smoking so bad that it's fouling plugs, you might get more of a decent core but then it's obviously going to need rings and probably the bore's bad whatever anyway that's the, that's one of the points i wanted to make and if i would have just went ahead and took that first one that i took apart that had the mismatched rods i'd probably already have the engine built already so now i have another one that has one bad rod they could probably be fixed or replaced whatever and then i have the other rotating assembly that has mismatched caps like i said i already sent the roller block to the machine shop and I told them just to order me the right pistons flat tops that you know for whatever they bore it to and then I'll deal with the rotating assembly later and that's all I got for today don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe the end